Who is I Hayasaka? I thought I knew the answer to that question. The funny sidekick to Kaguya who would go to almost the same lengths as her to get the mission done. She also has an instantly classic deadpan reaction for any situation it is called for. She was malleable, able to switch from persona to persona at the drop of a hat, but also was never in the spotlight long enough for me to really recognize this fact. In essence, what I thought Hayasaka to be was a character. And if the Scarlet Letter taught me anything, looking at fictional characters as anything less than people is a fatal flaw within the audience. A character is something that reacts to the plot, and does things when those things are needed to get done. Say we have to prevent Shiragane from reaching the student council room. Narratively, Hayasaka serves that exact purpose. And even out of the context of the story, this moment provides us with a nice humorous chuckle. An easy way to forget that the rainforests around the world are burning and that it's mostly by humans. Oh my god! A person contrastly is someone that the plot revolves around and does things out of an internal desire to do so. A good writer will be able to write people, not characters. This is what makes Kaguya-sama the greatest rom-com to ever exist. Do not argue with me on that point. I as the audience participant gave all of the characters the respect they deserve, even to someone like Chika, who admittedly seems a bit more shallow, but is still a deep character. At least I thought I gave all these characters respect. And then I watched Season 3, Episode 2 of the anime and instantly recognized the grave mistake I had made. I had never seen Hayasaka in this way. Sure, she was always one of my favorite characters, but I know now that was only because she made me laugh. And while Kaguya-sama is one of the funniest shows I've ever seen, it's not made to make you laugh. Rather, I believe the author is crafting plots and events with such dynamic and fun characters and throwing them all together in such a fun way that the audience can't help but laugh. Of course, actual jokes are thrown in for a comedic effect, but individual jokes can only go as far as the situations that they are a part of. And great comedy always has those situations spawn organically. Think of any situation in Konosuba and really pay attention to how many actual jokes are made and you'll see my point here. Any specific ridiculous battle between Kagi and Shiragane on any specific day is only funny because they themselves are ridiculous. This makes it so that, funnily enough, we as the audience don't find it ridiculous. Situational comedy is really just a measure of how ridiculous you can make something before it seems unbelievable. So when a comedic writer goes in with the main intent of making you laugh, you're probably not going to laugh very much. It's the same with great horror. I say all this and yet I never thought of Hayasaka enough to make this connection with her. Her deadpan reactions are only hilarious because we can infer how ridiculous she finds this situation, yet still plays along, either out of obligation or her own twisted personality. That's where my thoughts ended though, and I almost imagine that this version of Hayasaka, the deadpan reaction, was her natural state, and that everything else was the act. To think this, I had to have not really been looking at her at all, and I can't tell you how wrong I was for doing that. Who is Hayasaka? I ask again because I just cannot find that answer. When she intentionally flirts with Shiragane and reveals to Kaguya that she wanted to hurt her, she is rightfully called out for being twisted. I was honestly blown away by her actions here, and became almost disillusioned with the anime itself, a sign of good writing, I may add. Any great show will have you constantly reimagining what it even is, with big moments like this changing your entire opinion on the fly. And when she went on her rant to Shiragane about playing an act and how nobody would love you if you didn't, my mold of her as a character in a romantic comedy was shattered. She was a person. A person who had directly called me out for thinking otherwise. To me, it seems like Hayasaka is empty. With no real agency of her own, she's never shown to really want to do anything. Even besides their pursuit for each other, Kagi and Shiragane always have other motivations. Chika, Ino, Ishigami, they all have things that drive them. But what does Hayasaka have? Honestly, she just kind of plays along with whatever crazy scheme Kagi has cooked up for that week. And while she certainly takes his job seriously, it's just that. A job. We even see her visibly lack emotional investment in the grander scheme. As while she supports Kagi, of course, she doesn't really see the need for the farce. 
So we can't call this her motivator. So what is? Nothing. She has nothing. She never needed to have anything. She never even needed to want anything because her job has always been to help someone else with what they want. But since she is a person, she can't live this way. and She's starting to crack. We see this during her conversation with Shiragani in the karaoke booth. And she determines that the only way for anyone to love him is for him to put on an act. Of course, she's only really talking about herself here. If she stopped helping Kaguya, Kaguya wouldn't love her. If she stopped having a bubbly personality around her friends and around boys, they wouldn't love her. Hell, if she stopped having such a deadpan, exhausted attitude, we, the audience, might not even love her. Why should they? Why should we? There's nothing to love. Because I, Hayasaka, is nothing. Of course, she isn't actually nothing. She's a person. This is just what she tells herself. Hayasaka even goes so far as to try and hurt Kaguya, as she's become jealous that Kaguya is finally experiencing joy in life. That's something she wants too. And I expect we will be exploring this further in the third season and beyond, as the story digs more into her character. I'm not a manga reader and have received no spoilers to this regard, so I have no idea. I'm really just going based off this episode primarily and everything that's come before but I just hope she can find happiness. I bet she will. Before she does, however, you can help her and subscribe to the channel to see more videos on Kaguya-sama, other anime, video games, or really whatever I decide to talk about. This is the first time that I've had the channel that a season of Kaguya has aired, and I am so excited to talk more about it. I'm also heavily debating on doing a weekly stream where I talk about all the anime from that week, so let me know if you liked that idea down in the comments. And, oh yeah, no spoilers. This is one of my favorite anime ever made. It's my favorite rom-com ever made. It is probably my favorite love story. I will cry if it's spoiled for me. Just remember, Kaguya-sama is the greatest rom-com ever made. Good writers write people, not characters. And as always, thank you for watching.